One, two, one, two, three. Oh my gosh. So for my YouTube channel, we have a special guest, my friend Chelsea, who lives in Los Angeles, right? LA? Yes. LA. Yes. Lives in LA, is joining me today for our topic. We're going to talk about mental health or like things that we do individually that help us with mental health pre-COVID and then like what's going on now. But I figured we could just do a little like introduction. So do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, I'm Chelsea and thank you for having me. I'm so excited. This is such a treat. Um, yeah, so I am in LA. I studied with Emily in college, theater and dance, but I'm now writing and podcasting and blogging and doing all that fun stuff. And I'm a puppy mom and I married wow. a German guy. And other than that, life is good. <laughs> <laughs> Great introduction. Oh my goodness. Yes, we are both puppy mothers. Yes. Um, if anyone is following my channel, I do my like little like weekly puppy update. Um, Chelsea also has a puppy. Uh, what is it? Kavapoo? A Kavapoo. Mm -hmm. Kavapoo. Kavapoo. Kavapoo mommy and a gold new mommy. So that is 2020, 2021 pup moms. So I figured I was like really interested personally in like what I do to manage my mental health, like really simple things. And I like sort of like made a list and then I was like, it would be interesting to know like what other people do because I feel like people don't think about their mental health. And I feel like so much is going on right now that like we sort of have to. Yeah. So I figured we could like read off or like talk about things that we do. Um, so I guess I'll go first. So one thing that I started last year from my really good friend from tour is reading for pleasure. Um, and it, came, it sort of became a goal where like I wanted to a read more to stop watching television um because i was just watching too much tv and i wanted to like use my mind more when i was like reading and i found that like reading a story or reading a book that i was interested in like calmed me down or like gave me something to like look forward to um every day so that's like one thing that i started last year pre-covid and actually have continued and pushed further with this year just because we have to I have time now to read more I love reading. I'm like a big, I love reading and I could just read all the time. And so I think that's definitely having like time to read too is such a yeah. blessing. Oh yeah, totally. And I think that almost like ties in with one of mine is I, I try to find like time throughout the day, especially that we're home now and like not doing a whole lot is, um, that I like things I wouldn't normally do in the middle of the day. Like, I'll just be like, I'm going to take a bath at 1 PM and like, why not? And then sit in like the bath with my book. And that is something that I always find, you know, even if it's just taking a hot shower or something you wouldn't normally do like smack dab in the middle of the day. And I think that's kind of makes it keeps things fun and interesting. It's actually funny that I like, I'm reading my little like list of what I think about with mental health but this is also something that I've actually been doing this for five years mm -hmm. so I started this five years ago because I found myself being really negative like I was complaining a lot about things and mm -hmm. I like looked at situations in my life and I was like comparing myself to others and everything like every event that was happening in my life I was like really negative about mm -hmm. and I was like well I need to start doing something to like be grateful every day. So I started to journal um, just five things that I was grateful for every day. And it could have been like my coffee, my commute safety. I don't know, like just like random things, but now it's become like a daily thing. And I actually have like, I started collecting um, all these like cool little journals. So I've been doing this for five years. And I think this is journal number 28. Wow. Yeah. That's and it's, amazing. and it's turned into like scrapbooking. Sometimes it's full journaling, like really like the meat of like yeah. what you want to talk about. Sometimes it's like, here's what happened today. It's actually so funny. John and I's first date is in my journal. So like to oh. go back and like, look at like what I experienced on our first date is kind of cool. Um, and I find that like every evening I like sit at my desk and I like reflect on the day and like some days are like awful. And I'm like, I didn't do anything today. I'm so tired. I didn't feel well. And then like the next day I'm like, look at everything I got done. So you can sort of like, look at, I guess, look at your mental health. I don't know if that's just something that I've been doing forever. That's 
funny. That's one of my things too, is journaling like a hundred percent and however it works for you. So like, yeah, for me, some days when I feel like I don't have, I mean, a lot of what I do is writing. And so I, writer's block is a thing. And when I get stuck or when I'm even feeling stuck, like emotionally, I'll just sit down and set a timer for five minutes and just free write. So like just whatever stream of consciousness, no one's ever going to read this, just keep writing it down. And it releases that like the cobwebs and that's mm -hmm. super helpful. And then I, yeah, gratitude journal. Like if you read my blogs or listen to my podcast, I talk about gratitude journaling, like it is my job. Um, so that's, I love it. And I think it's a really special exercise. And I was listening to something today, some podcast or something where they were talking about like the neuroscience of gratitude. So like how it actually releases endorphins and can, it, it's a, it's a thing. It's a thing. I'm not making this stuff up. So. No, no, actually there's a, there's like a scientific study and I used to do this all the time on tour because the thing that like people don't understand about like touring with a national, like national Broadway show is like, it's not fun and games all the time. Like sometimes it's really hard to do that show, like to like buck up and go. And, and they say that if you force yourself to smile, so like there would be nights where like, I really just didn't have any energy and I was like getting ready for my number. And I was like, and I just like sat in a happy smile, like a breathing smile, not like an angry smile, but like a genuine smile. And it sort of like releases the endorphins of like, it's not fake happiness. It's like changing from from this if you've been like this and like angry and upset all the time I really had to like and just smile for a little bit yeah. and then go and then it, it really changes the chemistry of your body and I, I think that and I also think people think about journaling and it's like I have to be positive I have to share all this stuff but it's like but it's your journal and there's this Gabby Bernstein meditation I'm a little obsessed with her but there's this Gabby Bernstein meditation called rage on the page so you literally just like you write down that ain't whatever like is anger or whatever those negative feeling emotions even though they're not bad emotions they're just they don't they aren't the pretty happy ones um but you get them out and i found that to be so helpful it's like don't judge yourself in your journal just put it down mm -hmm. <laughs> just put it down yeah. yeah i'm also gonna do a little shameless plug for the youtube viewers you want to go check out chelsea's podcast which i recorded with her yesterday <laughs> worthiness warriors Got Worthy it. Warriors podcast. She also has a blog on her website. I'm going to link this all below for for everybody, but you can check out her blog. You also do YouTube videos too, right? Like you do your, everything I you do. post on Instagram, your like chats and stuff you put on YouTube as well. Exactly. So like anything that goes on my blog, the girl with five names will go and post to YouTube as well. And so it, yeah, you can watch if you just want the video it's up there. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And I sort of love, I, I mean, I may be making an assumption, but I feel like every time you come on and I watch your videos of like what you've thought about that day, that's also a way to like manage your mental health. Cause like, I feel like the past two years, like 2020 and 2021, something is happening every day that like, you just need to like, blurt out how, how you're feeling about it mm -hmm. and uh, I think it's kind of fun that we we transitioned I feel like both of us to like talking to Instagram or talking to YouTube or talking on a podcast as opposed to just like keeping it in personally it's another way to get it out and it's like not everyone has to share their personal story with the whole world like that's something that you and I like to do but like not everybody loves to do and so I think but being able to express it, however, tell that story to your dog, tell that story to your family, your parents, whomever, your partner, whomever it is. I think a lot of times expressing it and saying like, I'm not looking to fix this. I just need to get it out. And that's a oh, big one. Definitely. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, so this is something that I started to, to do more in COVID times um, versus, because I guess in New York, we're always outside, but like making a conscious effort to get outside. Um, we did that a lot. I moved in with my dad, um, John and I moved in with my dad because we wanted to get out of the New York bubble when it was really bad. And we like had to force ourselves to take walks every day for physical, you know, just to like walk around and just like to get out of the house. I feel like we've all been stuck inside. Um, and so we also do that in New York too. I mean, it's easier with the dog. You got to take the dog out. But before we had the dog and we moved back here in August, we like made conscious effort to get outside and like walk for like an hour. Um, 
And that I feel like has really helped my mental health through this, through COVID. Totally. I think that I had a similar something like with COVID particularly, I've started to, and I think this is something I can take into like post COVID times is trying to focus on what I am getting done versus all the things I'm not getting done. And so we're in this weird kind of like time warpy thing. And I think you can't have the same expectations of yourself as you would during normal day-to-day life. And so I find that like, sometimes I don't get all the stuff done on my to-do list that I have like obsessively color coded and um, yeah. And, and my life is in there, but when I don't get things done, I used to spend a lot of time beating myself up about all the things that didn't get done. Mm -hmm. And now I'm really trying to focus on like, but what did I get done today? Okay. You know, even if it's small, I walked my dog, I wrote a blog post. I, you know, I showered. I'll definitely check that off the list. Right. I feel like we're in that, we're in that stage of like getting up and showering or just getting up. That's a check mark for, for coronavirus times. (laughs) I'll take it. I ate food. It was good. You know, I think it's like yeah. focusing on any way you can. These are the things I did get done instead of that negative, like, oh my God, I didn't get all of these things done. And now I'm behind forever. It's a, uh, cause that can be a slippery spiral. I'm working on it, but it's definitely helped when I do. Like yeah, I do absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I love the checklist. I also love like there's something about, I mean, I don't have a big checklist. I think I have one thing right now to call and get a vaccine, but <laughs> there's something about having like 10 things and I love to have all 10 things there and then as I check them off it like makes me feel good to like see more checkoffs than the things that I still have to do just like that little thing helps the mental health oh this is something really weird and strange and maybe just pertains to me um this was before I left for tour and I think it was related to because my dad sold our childhood home and I never really like uh felt um, physical anxiety. You know how people like feel the chest pressure. Mm -hmm. I've, I've had anxiety, but like not that feeling. And I was, I was starting to have like panic attacks and like, um, physical symptoms of anxiety. And I thought like something was wrong with my heart and we like got all these tests and I was fine. And he was like, okay, well now we have to go into like psychological things because maybe it's something there. And I got myself a Fitbit Mm. and, and this is also, it helps me with flying too. When I was on tour, but with my panic attacks, I would get so worked up that my heart, I could feel, you know, when you feel your heart and your throat and you like can't breathe. Oh, yeah. And I hate that feeling because I think we talked about this yesterday, like lack of control, like you can't control that. Yeah. But I found that with your Fitbit, you can watch your heart rate. And if you do the, like the like deep breathing, like the meditative breathing, you can oh. see your heart rate go down. Like you're physically controlling the heart rate. Wow. And there's something about that that like really fixed so much for me. It fixed like m- when I got scared of flying with turbulence. It like fixed when I was like really nervous and like couldn't catch my breath. And it like fixed my panic attacks because I could like physically see and control my mm-hmm. body. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's so weird, but I thought I'd bring it up because I don't know if maybe like anybody out there wants to leave a comment to see if they've done something similar. But yeah, that's something that's like one thing that like has helped my mental health over the past like couple of years. And especially with COVID, I feel like every day something comes up and you're like, oh, I can't, I can't focus. You're not, oh my gosh, first of all, you're, that's not weird at all because I have, I don't have a lot of anxiety, but I do get the physical manifestations of anxiety with my breathing. So like I always say, I, I all of a sudden feel like I can't breathe where like, there's just this pressure in my chest and like people think, I think people think that I'm really bored when I start yawning, but I'm not, I'm trying to catch my breath. And that's the only way I usually can do it. But one of the things I found so that I'm not like just yawning in front of people, um, it's like, if I'll excuse myself or right now, if I'm home and panicking about something, it's like a 30 second breath. So you inhale for 10 seconds, hold it for 10 seconds and release for 10 seconds. And then I do it 10 times. So it takes five minutes who doesn't have five minutes. And when you really feel like you can't breathe and you can't catch your breath, it's almost, it shows you like, Oh, I can fill my lungs. I am getting enough air. And then it starts to slow the anxiety down and you have to count and think, and that kind of centers you. And I think that is, I've done that. Oh my gosh, for years now, because it 
saves me. I mean, just thinking about it, my chest gets all like, Ooh. Oh, yeah. um, the other thing I think, especially during COVID that's been helpful is trying to keep in touch with people virtually. Like I was totally going to say that was my uh, last one. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. FaceTiming and, and connecting with people. Like I, I have to say the one blessing of COVID I found is I've reconnected with so many people I haven't spoken to in so long because all of a sudden, like whatever circle you had gets expanded. But I think that like when that circle expands, you have that opportunity to talk to all these different people and reconnect with so many people that you haven't talked to. Yeah. I felt like at the beginning of COVID, I was like immediately always on the phone with the people that I was just touring with because we just finished and then that sort of like drifted away and there was like a couple there was like a month or two where I was like pretty content to just like chill we did have a lot of like connections like I reconnected over zoom with like old casts or like my really good group of friends from high school we did like zoom birthdays on the computer um but I found myself trying to make more of an effort to connect than I used to uh, pre-COVID. Because I guess, and this may be just be the nature of New York City, but like in New York, you see people on the street every second of the day. Like you don't have to make an effort because you always run into people because it's such a small world, like the theater world. We also all live on the same area. We live like on 8th Avenue and up. (laughs) So it's not difficult to see people that you know. But I found myself going into 2021, which is like why, I asked you to be on my video and then she asked me to do her podcast as a collaboration is like, I want to connect and like create with people now um, and like open up and have conversations and and collaborate more, um, not even on a professional level, but just on a like artistic level or or something like that. So that's sort of uh, been helpful and like motivating for 2021 for me for like like mental health is like motivating me it's like nice to like have something on your calendar of like I have a meeting today (laughs) it it feels so good and it feels like that connection is so special and I have to say one of the things I've loved about podcasting is like I get to have conversations with people people I love that I've known for a long time stuff I didn't even know about them comes up and it makes it really like a fascinating conversation and it's, you know, now my job, which is great. And so I get to just connect with people and talk to people and, and, you know, learn all kinds of things about them. Like you, it was such a joy and it's so much fun. And I like, I, yeah, it's, if you've ever considered doing a podcast, it's super fun. <laughs> I know it's funny when I saw that you did the podcast, I was like, oh, cause like we've got the equipment here. It's more of like, what would I talk about? which it's so funny too, like just in this conversation, I was like, maybe tap something tap dance related. Listen, 2021 is full of possibilities for everybody. YouTube, podcast, right? TikTok musicals. Did you see the Ratatouille TikTok musical? It was amazing. It's like, so- what the heck? And now they're doing the Bridgerton musical. Are you, have you watched Bridgerton? No, I have okay. to to watch you gotta get on that you gotta get on that because the musical is fire yeah so that's that's sort of just I guess our take on mental health um I will say to the youtubers I hope you guys enjoyed this video please head over to Chelsea's website again I'll link everything below for everybody um her podcast her website her blogs her everything you could follow her on Instagram put it right here on the video when we edit it together um and please don't forget to subscribe before you go and i will see you guys in the next one thank you chelsea so much for coming on my youtube channel we're by coastal right now we're la new york which is so fun and sassy and um maybe more collabs in the future i'm here for it i'm ready perfect see ya